All right, so first item of business is minutes. Did anybody read them? Does anybody have any changes or corrections? They're fine. Yep, look good. No changes. All right, all in favor of accepting the minutes? Aye. 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 See, that's easy. Um, because they're so good. Yes. <laughs> um, the, um, this, the, the, is the situation with the sovereign builders is that uh, when I finally got out there to look at their erosion control and to meet with the pre-construction meeting. Um, um, does clear. that remind me which, which project is sovereign builders? It's across from Tom's hot dog, the self-storage. Oh, okay. Self-storage, yep, got it. Yeah. So there was some misunderstanding and Todd <laughs> Zalora thought that there was a defined season that was referred to as the dry season and that once that date passed that he could no longer do the work in the stream. But at the time we were out there, the stream was still dry. We were still in the drought. And I told him that as far as we were concerned, it all just has to do with whether there's water in the stream or not. And given that we were in a drought, I really encouraged him to try to get mobilized and, and get it in while he had dry conditions to work with. So he decided he would try to scramble and do that, but he ran into supply chain problems in terms of materials and also the availability of contractors. And he wasn't able to get in before the rains came and there was then water in the brook again. So our, um, our order of conditions says that it has to be done when the stream is dry. And so he asked me, or I, his consultant, uh, Meredith asked if frozen would be good enough, you know, or is, does it have to be actually dry or could it be frozen? And my response was that I think it has to be dry because frozen may be only frozen on the surface. It may still be liquid down below. And, you know, if they run into liquid water, then they're going to have to do some dewatering in order to do the work. And dewatering is not anything that we've reviewed, nor have we approved. Um, so um, there's been back and forth, uh, me and Todd and me and the consultants about whether this is something that could be handled with an amended order of conditions. Uh, and I suggested that it was more appropriate to file a new order, of, a new notice of intent, because once you get into dewatering, you're no longer dealing with a minor change in the plan that would have the same or less environmental impact than what was originally proposed. And that's the guidance that we've gotten from DEP as to when we can go ahead and use an amended order of conditions uh, versus when we should request or require a, a new notice of intent. <clears throat> so it looked like they were going to try to scramble to get into to us at this meeting I said that, you know, I wanted to have the watering plans and I also wanted to complete plants from in terms of the design of the crossing, which, uh, you know, had been done sort of after we issued the order of conditions. I said, you know, file a new notice of intent, include all of the plans as part of that notice. And they came back and said, we can't do this in time for the December meetings. So now it looks like they're going to shoot for the January meeting. They haven't <clears throat> specified with me yet whether they're going to request. There was some argument about this should be handled as an amended order. And, and I said, you can come to the commission and you can request that. I can't guarantee you that people will say yes. Uh, I think you'd be safer filing a notice of intent so that you're not delayed You know, if the commission says, no, we need a notice of intent. But they haven't indicated yet whether they're going to go with the a request for an amended order or with a new notice of intent. So that may be a decision that we'll have to make in January if they come before us at that time. Well, questions or comments? I think I agree with you, Scott. Like with frozen, I think, like you said, you, even if it's frozen at the top, you might hit, like you said, the good water underneath. So yeah, that would still be a lot of issues. They could just make a mud mess if they really got into it if it's not too frozen. I'm not sure that section of brook would ever freeze. Hmm. Right. And it may be, you know, he 
originally when he said that he'd missed the dry period and he was going to shoot for May, I said, you're not going to find dry conditions in May. I, it's, I think you should get it done this year while you can. But, uh, you know, situation conspired against him. He couldn't get in. But I think that at this point, you know, there may not be any dry period next year. So we probably have to deal with uh, dewatering and and how to do the construction when the stream is still flowing. And, um, you know, I also went back and forth with Mickey Marcus about the design of the crossing and the, and the channel within the crossing. And it's not, it hasn't really been finalized on a plan yet. So I also, you know, hope that they will get that figured out and, and on a plan that we can put in the file and we can all look at and comment on as well. So. I think a new notice of intent makes a lot more sense and you know it's something we should be able to permit if they do a good job of presenting the case and and producing the plans and hopefully that's the route they'll go. Um so one other update that just occurred to me is that yeah, I think I may have told you that the FERCOG is doing sort of a feasibility assessment of uh, creating a shared conservation agent that might be shared by multiple towns. And uh, they sent out to me and other conservation commissions, us and other conservation commissions. I say me because I haven't sent it on to you, uh, but I can. A, a draft uh, position uh, description and also the results of the survey that they put out to us about our needs for the various different towns. So eight towns responded to the survey, um, and you know the the position description looked good, but it looked too broad to me. So I, I sent comments back to um, the person who was putting it together. Let me see. His name is. Uh, Keith Barnacle. Um, and I, at this point, I have no idea how many towns are realistically considering this option, you know, and whether one eighth of a of a conservation agent that might do us just fine, that would be about five hours a week or so. Um, that seems, I think we may only need five hours a month, uh, the way things go for us. But um, I I also just got a request from Brian for for budget for FY24. So I wrote back and said, you know, we might want to go with this shared agent. Should I put money in the budget for that? I don't have no idea how much it's going to be. And do I have to go to the selectmen and the finance committee? And basically, he said, yes, you know, yes, put it in there. Yes, you should meet with the select board and the finance committee. And so uh, I will probably just come up with a number. Um, and and put it in there as a placeholder and then have the conversation with those two boards. Um, but what I indicated that I felt like we needed was, you know, somebody who can, you know, prepare the agenda, can write up the minutes, can do all the forms and get signatures and get all that stuff mailed out, the sort of pesky stuff that takes time. Um, and, and, and I'm so getting tired of doing it. Um, somebody who can uh, you know, go out and answer questions for people, maybe uh, if there's a, a report of a violation, you know, that person could go out and check it out and report back. Um, so you know, that, that's essentially what I think would be helpful is that basically the decision making stays with the board, but all that other sort of administrative work, it'd be great to have somebody else who could do that, somebody who can field phone calls and and get things on the agenda and things like that. Is this so. for uh, 2024 or for 23? Well, we're in FY23. So oh, okay. I think this the earliest it would be would be FY24, which begins July 1st. And I have a sneaking suspicion it won't really be ready to launch by July 1st, but I could be wrong. So any, any thoughts or comments about that? That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. No. 
Yeah, I think the way that I'll pitch it to the finance committee and the select board is, is that um, I've been chair for a long time. If I want, if I'm going to continue as chair, I think it would be good to lighten the load and make it easier for me to stick around. If I don't stick around, if you lighten the load, you're more likely to find somebody else willing to do this job. And so either way, you know, I think it's in the town's interest to, mm -hmm. to get a little bit of help because this, this isn't like the most glamorous board and, uh, mm -hmm. or job in the world. So um, it's not easy to find people to serve. It's not easy to find people to serve as chairs. Right. Well, Patty Devine is on the finance committee now. Oh, good. She can speak to it as well. <laughs> right. right. Well, she knows she knows what's involved in all the right. administrative. Right. So does anybody else have any any business for us to attend to tonight? Nope. Pretty quiet. Nope, not me. Well, I'm sorry that you can't all join me at the big steamship at the corner of the <laughs> center of town here, but uh, for for a beer and and for some holiday cheer. But maybe one of these days we'll be free to gather again indoors. Yeah, look forward to it. Yep, me too. All right. Well, I hope I wish you all a very happy holiday season. Happy solstice. You too. And, uh, okay, you have Everybody a great else. start to the new year, and I'll see you in January. Yeah. Okay. Take care, you guys. Everyone else. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.